My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. This is the third stream in a row. Hopefully this one will work properly. Uh, yeah. Let me think. Is there anything else that I need to... Oh, yeah. My channel is now going to be like three streams deep. Hold on. Let's uh, go here, and then we're going to go here, and then nothing's going to work again. YouTube Studio... My name's Aaron Ciotti, everybody calls me Ciotti. The computer that I'm currently on has decided that it is gonna revolt in every way possible now that it knows that it's being replaced. <laughs> okay, so we can get rid of this one and we can get rid of this other one and then we'll be good to go. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, as as hard as it is to believe, this is my full time job. <laughs> if you'd like me to keep fucking up, <laughs> head on over to cidfpv.com. Once you get to CIDFPV.com, you're going to be able to click lots of buttons. The one that you can click that helps me out the most is Patreon. Join my Patreon or else I will die. <laughs> um, three whole dollars a month will get you onto my Patreon. It's the closest thing that I have to a paycheck. There's all kinds of great stuff going, over there, going on over there. And you're going to get an email notification, a Discord notification, and a Facebook notification when I stream. Uh, it's kind of the only way to know when I'm going to stream because I don't have a schedule. Um, YouTube, Instagram, Etsy, there's some stickers and some hardware. Over on Fiverr, I've got a bunch of cool stuff going on. Flight instruction, if you liked the way that I was flying in the first of three streams tonight, which I just deleted, 
Uh, I can help you fly like that um, over on Fiverr or just message me and we'll schedule something. Spend a half an hour or an hour. Uh, I'm going to do flight coaching with you. I'm going to take a look at what your style is, who your favorite pilots are, where you're at right now as a pilot, and put you on a path to improvement. Uh, T-shirts over on Teespring, a little store over on FPV Exchange, and then a whole bunch of affiliate links here. If you're ever doing an order for anything on FPV Cycle, Amazon, Get FPV, Oh My God's website, FPV Crate, Banggood, Camera Butter, or AliExpress, all you got to do is hit one of these before you check out, and I'm going to get 1% to 6% of the order. Over here in the chat, if you want to talk directly to me, all you've got to do is type Ciati FPV. You have to spell it properly, and you can't put a space in between Ciati and FPV. These people did it properly, and by doing it properly, it highlights an orange, and I know that you guys are talking to me. Speaking of the chat, Finn FPV was, well, I mean, first for the third stream. Paul McDonald, Joey K FPV, uh, MotoRef. MotoRef sent me an email... Uh, with everybody from uh, everybody that did super chats on Monday night, so I'm gonna be able to use that and PayPal uh, to put everybody on the wheel that went crazy Monday night um, with the donations. And uh, yeah, you guys will win something. Maybe we'll do that on Monday. Maybe that'll be the uh, I don't know. I'll do something cool. Uh, Grizz FPV, Late Night Scope, Michael Blades, Tark 61, T Bird. Kevin Smith, Rob Axelson, B-Man, Ed K. Zanakis, uh, Del Squatcho, Grizz, Frank Nicholas, Rob Axelson again, June Loco, always hath been, 661, Metal Dirtskin, looks like you guys all found your way back, thank you for bearing with me, Quadzimoto, June Loco again, Moto Ref again, Familiar FPV, and Northern Tier FPV. What's up, friends? The people that have tagged me so far have been Michael Blaze, he says, woohoo, you can do it. T-Bird says, what's up? B-Man says, you got the money... You got the money time to buy that new computer? Yeah, soon, man, soon. Uh, beginning of next month, when I get uh, my Patreon payout, I, I think I can uh, I think I think can swing it. Grizz FPV says, I built my 4-inch 250 and it rips, rocking it with a Vista right now, waiting to see uh, the new camera mounts. Sounds good, I'm waiting as well. Uh, Rob Axison says, don't touch anything that's working. Metal Derskin says, uh, I am every bit as good at my full-time job. <laughs> Frank Nicholas dropping the link to CIDFPV.com. Quadzimoto saying, what's up? MotoRef saying, check your email. Rewatch Monday's stream. Recorded all the Super Chats, PayPal donations. Uh, awesome. Thank you, MotoRef. I didn't know you put the uh, the PayPal stuff in there. That's super awesome. Uh, Your Majesty says, glad to see the fund is full. What's the next fund? Um, well, I'm going to leave this one up for a little while because, well, shit, let's look. Uh, I only SW updates. What the hell? Um, the the twelve ninety nine is the base price. Um, I forgot that you can't really add your own RAM or upgrade the hard drive by yourself. Now that they're making all these computers so goddamn thin, um, that you got to get all that stuff right out of the box. So I'm gonna leave this up for a little while to see if, because I mean. I think it's going to be closer to like 1800 all in. But let's take a quick look. Um, how the hell do you buy the damn thing? I'm not not going to buy it right now. I don't um, I don't have enough uh, to buy it right now. When you guys do super chats, those I don't actually get those super chats for like a month and a half to two months because of the way that Google and and YouTube pay out, um, which is totally fine. Uh, but I, I just, I don't think I have quite enough. Although, if it's going to be zero APR, uh, 150, 141, for, what, how's that math work out? Yeah, that gets it there. Well, shit, I could just do that. Uh, but yeah, you guys know what I'm saying. Of course it's going to be purple. So wait, what's the difference here? Eight core, seven core? Christ, if it had one core, it would be faster than this computer. Um... Ah, okay. So, what does this not have USB 3 ports? Okay, so I guess have to go with the middle one here. Um, I don't really care about this magic keyboard. Gigabit Ethernet, I don't think, I mean, Christ, Comcast, I don't even think it has one bit Ethernet. Uh, blah, 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 blah. 
What's uh, what's this one have over here that's so special? 512 gig internal drive. I mean, I assume that they're going to let me bump the size of the drive up. I don't really need that big of an internal hard drive because I'm going to have four externals hooked up. Um, where... Are you going to let me do options or what? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um... So yeah, I guess it needs to be that one, and then uh, 512 internal is probably fine. I don't really want this, I don't want this mouse, and I don't want this wireless keyboard though. But the, the middle one has the USB port, so I have to, um, I have to do this middle one, which is fine. Uh, so yeah, the, this is, this is why I'm gonna leave the... <laughs> the fund up for for a little bit longer um, so yeah we don't need any pre-installed software so yeah it looks like this is gonna be it it looks like this will be uh, what I order in purple the, there is like a red they call it pink it's kinda red I'm, I'm sorta tempted to do the red uh, where is it at yeah see they call it pink but it uh, I guess it is kinda pink um, it's gotta be purple, right? We gotta do the purple one. It's gonna be the purple one. Uh, Jory is here, says for 1900 bucks you could build a way better PC. That's true, Jory, but then, unfortunately, I would end up actually killing myself because when I use PCs, I literally get suicidal. They are that awful. Um, so, yeah, that ain't gonna happen. I mean, unless, you know, that's what you guys want, which I doubt. You guys are pretty cool. You don't want me to die. Um... Getting a little macabre. It's a little early in the stream to get so dark. Yikes. Uh, Moto Red. Oh, wait, we got that. Uh, we got that. Uh, June Loco says, new car fund. Yeah, it, it very well could be. Uh, Your Majesty says, do you accept Bitcoin or anything for donations? Um, I don't, Your Majesty. I, I probably should, but uh, I am just super busy, man. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm just too busy to pick up another thing that I got to try to think about and do all that nonsense with. Metal Dirtskin says, I missed the whole thing on Monday, but we'll definitely join in the fun when I have the chance. Sounds good, Metal. Uh, Frank Nicholas says, what you want, what you want, you be 29, 2099. Um, uh, yeah, I, uh, if I went to the even bigger internal hard drive, I'll bet it would be there, but... Um, yeah, I just don't, I don't think I need to, but I'll, I'll figure it out. I talked to my dad a little bit about it, uh, yesterday, which was cool to catch up with him. I hadn't talked to him in a while. Uh, but before I actually buy it, I'll, uh, I'll talk to him again to, uh, just kind of figure it out. FinFTV says, will they let you trade in your current one? <laughs> it did say trade in program, but I'll just hock it on eBay. Yarb says, definitely go with at least the middle one. I've heard rumors of a significant, significant performance difference if you get Better than the cheapest. Interesting. Uh, Michael Blade says, I'm definitely going with the iMac soon. Very cool. We'll be twinsies. Sorry to use the word twinsies, guys. Frank Nicholas says, you want the bigger internal for speed. Nothing external can touch the speed. Um, that's interesting. Um, that's kind of annoying. Performance difference is 7%. 7% eh, is not that bad. Uh, Alright, cool. So, uh, let's start fixing stuff. Since I am caught up on the chat and I do have a bunch of uh, work to do over here. Uh, let's get going. Uh, Logitech, I don't care what you do. Just work. Just work. Okay, cool. So, where we left off was... Oh, I, I meant to wear my Gem Fan shirt tonight. I am a bad sponsored pilot. I'm not wearing, I haven't worn their shirt on stream yet. Uh, yeah, so here's where we're at. We are here on Earth. And, uh, oh no, I just dropped that battery in the abyss. Oh, that's the abyss. I'm never gonna find that battery. Oh, there it is. Got it, got it, everything's fine. Nobody panic, it's organic. Uh, uh, come on, get over there. Get, would you just, okay. Okay, all right. 
All right, I'm back. I'm back. Uh, so, we've got... Which glide is this? This is usually the second glide that I... This is kind of the second uh, beater glide, I guess you could say. Uh, the red one with the 20 by 20 Akon is almost always the one that I put up in the air first so that it, I get as much testing and abuse in on that 20 by 20 Akon as possible. But, I mean, at this point, like, that thing has survived at least a year, so it's, it's pretty much good to go. Uh, this is the one that I'll put up in the air once that one, once I inevitably blow that one to hell. And uh, so we have now replaced all four arms on here because this one gets a good amount of uh, abuse. And we also need to replace the antenna and I'm swapping the motors out. So we got a bunch more work to do here. Uh, let's take care of the motors first. Kick on this Weller 1010 soldering iron over here on my right. Uh, let me actually clean the desk up. Just a little now. We're gonna. The desk is all filled up with uh, rip squeak stuff. We're gonna be working on the rip squeak like tomorrow and Friday. I'm tempted to uh, to clean up a little bit, but I'm not gonna uh, because it's just gonna get put right back out here. Oh 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 oh. So let's do the uh, let's do the shrink wrap. Let's do the sorry the shrimp wrap. On the uh, on the race wires here, one of the uh, one of the little tricks to these race to getting these race wires to be a little more durable, so that when you get prop strikes, it doesn't just rip all of the uh, LEDs off, is to just put a little bit of shrimp wrap on them. The shrimp wrap will uh, will take a little bit of the uh, the violence out of the um, out of the prop strikes, and then yeah, your uh, your race wires won't hand grenade nearly as quickly. Uh, so I'll put it on here and I'll just nip it a little bit there to mark it. And then we will chop it the rest of the way. And now we can use this piece as a little guide to cut the rest of them. Cause I think I need to do all four. Yeah, I'm gonna do all four here. So yeah, let's get some uh, Let's do some shrimpin'. Let's do some shrimp boatin'. Is that a thing? You guys want to be my shrimp boat captains for the night? What the fuck am I saying? Uh, shrimp boating 101. Don't insult your captain. Uh, this is uh, different. Uh, let me get the let me get the roll out here. Okay, cool. So, Alec Dvornik with $4.20, he says, start a car fund. Much love, buddy. Thank you, Alec. Very, very kind of you. Much, much, much appreciated. Uh, car fund is coming, man. It's, it's coming. The, uh, even if I do get the Miata back, uh, it needs to get sold. It doesn't have air conditioning. It's a fucking mess. Somebody can use it to build a, uh, a Spec Miata or um, autocross car. It's got a lot of really good parts in it to do that with. Um, realistically, I'm not going to be able to afford to get back into motorsports from a, a time or money perspective. And that's okay. Um, I spent 10, 15 or so years in motorsports, um, it's okay to, uh, to move on. Uh, I miss it, but I scratch that itch with, uh, driving sims nowadays. Gran Turismo Sport, Assetto Corsa, uh, which some of you have suffered through here on YouTube. <laughs> um... I shouldn't say that. You guys have a blast watching me ram into shit. Um, so, yeah. I need a car with air conditioning. Uh, especially if I'm going to be going on dates, yo. Got to be able to get there without pit stains. And man, do I have an issue with pit stains. <laughs> okay, 
so let's get some heat on this and get them shrimped up. We're gonna do some shrimp in here. There's the top. Here comes the bottom. And it's good to go. I use a shrimp wrap that's a little too, a little bit too big, so that when it shrinks down, it gets a little bit thicker, and that gives it a little bit more protection. What do you think of that, world? I just touched that one that I'd been torching, and it was very hot. Don't do that, as my father would say. Alec Dvornik rightly saying, hit that like button. It's free of charge. It helps Google think that I'm somebody they should recommend to people to watch. And the more that we can trick Google and YouTube into thinking that, the better. Am I right? All right, two down, two to go. Alec also says, I'm on the M1, and yeah, you get used to the infrequent crashes, but it runs Windows better than Surface. Oh, wow, that's right. I'll be able to run Windows on the damn thing. And then promptly cut my throat. Uh, T-Bird says, you are a bad sponsor pilot. You are just a badass. Uh, I assume he meant to say... You aren't a bad sponsor pilot. Bob Noxious is in the house. What's up, brother? He says, hope you're well. Sent you an email a couple days ago. Uh, I get behind on my emails, Bob. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, I, will, uh, I will jump in there when I can and, uh, and give you an answer. Sorry about that, man. I feel like I see a little bit of a bridge here. How did I not, how did I not notice this? Uh, it probably isn't, but I'm not interested in finding out the hard way. So let me, uh, let me just clean this little guy up there. There might be a little bit of a bridge going on. Hopefully it's not a bridge to Terabithia. I, I, I don't know. I, I have no excuse for that one. That was just, just not good. Okay, so let's get this wire up enough here, and we're going to come in here and just... Yeah. No, no, I'm actually going to desolder this middle wire as well, and I'm just going to clean the whole area up. So, let's flatten out the exposed bit of the wire here. And let's get these two pads hot and make sure that there's no little boogers in between them. Okay, so now we're good to go. Uh, let me just flatten out the side of this one too here. Okay, much better. And then I'm gonna tin the tip just to get a little bit more flux on it. And in we go, and I'll be a little bit more careful this time. I was doing this the other night when I was trying to wrap the stream up, so I guess I, uh, I was in a little bit more of a hurry than I should have been. All right, so that one's looking good now, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm just gonna bring the, uh, just narrow the end of the wire here a little bit. That's better, there we go, okay, cool. We'll bring it down. Get a good grip on it with the tweezers. Remove the heat. Oh, that didn't. Why did that move to the side like that? That's a little odd. It's kind of coming at an angle here. Come on now. All right. There it goes. Much better. Okay, cool. So now there's really kind of no chance of a bridge. It probably got hot enough to get this VHB to stick to it, sure enough. So let's peel this VHB off yet again. Uh, it has now lost its stickiness, so we're gonna have to redo it. That's okay. Um, 
Frank Nicholas says, ever consider dipping your de devil horns in tool handle rubber dip for protection versus TPU? Um, I've thought of all kinds of different ways to do it. The the cold hard fact is, when that when they hit concrete at like 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, my God, there, there's ju it, it's just hopeless. Um, I am gonna try to be a little bit better about um, about using super glue. I have some uh, I have some 3M. Uh, not carbon fiber specific, but like I did a little bit of research online as to what, uh, if there's a, a type of super glue that is going to work better on carbon fiber. And I saw a couple people recommending this specific 3M stuff. Uh, so I have that coming. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in my journey with TPU arm ends, the only ones that really survive more than one hit are when there's like a half an inch of TPU on the end. Like just the 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 force that's involved when these things crash is just absurd. Um, so yeah, I think the name of the game is just going to be uh, gluing the carbon back together as often as possible. Um, because yeah, the carbon the, the the TPU explodes pretty much right away, um, unless it's really thick, and then that plastic dip tool grip material um, it wouldn't lay up on there thick enough. That that would be the problem. Um, I have plastic dip. I've 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 had a, a love. I mean, if you're into cars, you love plastic dip. It's it's just sort of a requirement. Um, and I've been into cars forever, so, you know, as per that requirement, uh, I'm a big fan of Plasti Dip. But, uh, yeah, and, and I, I've, I've definitely thought of that before, but I would need to dip it, like, over and over and over and over and over again to build up a thick enough layer. Um, and I know for a fact that Plasti Dip is pretty heavy because it's rubber. Um, so, yeah, it's a really good idea. I've, I've, definitely kicked that around before but uh i think i'm gonna kind of go away from the tpu thing these these ones here were sent to me by uh bmc 3d brent over at bmc 3d uh for some testing so i'm gonna test these out for him but then i actually think i'm gonna remove them because um you can really you can legitimately tell the difference uh when you remove weight from the ends of the arms and uh, yeah, running a, a naked arm end is uh, is something that I think I'm gonna start kind of doing, just for that little bit of extra performance. Um, and again, it it, it does kind of depend though. It depends on what kind of uh, longevity I get out of the arms when I'm super gluing them back together. Like if I start to really go through arms frequently. Uh, I'll probably go back to the TPU um, thing, or maybe I'll try out the uh, the plastic dip thing. The um, what's annoying is I've only ever seen um, they they sell little cans of plastic dip that you can then dip tools into, but I've only ever seen those cans in bright ass yellow, which is just horrifying. Um, I've got. Can they, they sell the cans of spray Plasti Dip in all kinds of colors. I mean, I would just want black, maybe red, actually. Uh, but yeah, the, the cans that you can dip stuff in, which is what I would want for these arms. I would want to just dip the end of the arm in. I, I don't necessarily want to have to deal with a spray can over and over and over again. Um, I've never seen that in any other color than yellow. And I mean, yellow is just kind of a deal breaker, unfortunately because, you know, form over function is very important. All right, so this VHB is kind of shot too, so we're gonna, we're gonna get some fresh VHB going here on these little fellas, and then we'll be all good to go. Um, Frank says you will not be able to run the windows you want arm m1 windows is not licensed except only for oems it's uh not the windows you think it is that's fine i, I hate windows and hope that it burns in a fiery hell uh 
Big FPV says, thoughts on changes at T-Motor, Vivian leaving. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Is that is that the only change? Um, I'm sure they'll replace her with, uh, with somebody good. Or not. I have no idea. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that there were any changes over there. Um, I think Vivian was just on like the marketing and um, uh, communication side of things, so I can't imagine that that'll affect the the motors in any way. Um, maybe the new person that they get will be uh, open to sponsoring me. That would be pretty cool. Um, that would be uh, I would like that. I've been shot. The backstory there is I've been shot down a couple times by T Motor. Um, it's cool that they that they've sent me some uh, some prototype stuff. That's very kind of them. Um, but I would really uh, benefit from a a T motor sponsorship so that I could really start banging the shit out of these motors. Um, motors are expensive, and and I go through a, a fair amount of them. Um, so yeah, a a T motor sponsorship would really really help out with uh with the costs associated with crashing constantly but uh it's all good it's all good man with sponsorships come extra work and uh i'm already pretty busy so there would be a chance that uh once they gave me the terms of the sponsorship i would potentially have to say no um just, you know, depending on what, what they expect from it. They have all the right in the world to expect you to do a bunch of work, you know, because it's, they're giving you, they're, it's not just free stuff. It's, it's free stuff in exchange for marketing. You're, you know, sponsorships are just you working as somebody in their marketing department. That, that's the easiest way to think about sponsorships. Um, and a lot of people don't like working in marketing departments, so that's why I kind of tell a lot of people to not think about or worry about sponsorships because, you know, if if you're into that kind of thing, go get a marketing job. You'll, you'll make a lot more money at a marketing job uh, than being a, a sponsored pilot marketer. So we're working on motor number two here first. Getting these little fellas soldered down. And push down a little bit with the soldering iron to kind of flatten those wires out ever so slightly. And that looks pretty good. Let's check our work with our 5X loop. That looks pretty good. Yep. Good enough. Uh, now I'm going to just kick this guy up and we're going to throw a motor screw or two on here and then we'll push that VHB down and we'll be good to go. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cut this down a little bit. There's really no reason for this little bit of TPU uh, in here. So let me show you guys how I'm going to lighten this thing up a little bit. I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to go like this. And now, we haven't saved much weight, but it's just, this is just useless. There's just no reason for this to be there. So now it looks like this. These things never fail in here. They always fail out here. Um, so, yeah. I tend to, to cut them down like this. Hell, sometimes I'll even chop this in half now and only run this guy on the front. Um, just run it like that, just the front bit. But, uh, you know. We will... Um Leave them both on. What the hell? What I'm just kind of looking at is the thickness down here versus the thickness up top. Whatever, it's fine. Let's put it back on and away we go. Motor screw. 
Hopefully it's long enough. Let's check it. Yeah, that's long enough, especially because it's going to compress the, uh, the TPU. So the reason why I want to put the motor screw on first, you know what? I probably have slightly longer motor screws over there. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. This is an M3 by 8. I should have an M3, a couple of M3 by 9s somewhere. They're under the arm. Is that an M3 by 9? It sure is. So yeah, we're going to go M3 by 9s on the outside here since they have the little bit of uh, TPU thickness to make sure that we get enough thread engagement. All right, and here we go. So I'm just gonna throw these guys on so that the motor is sitting in the correct spot. And then that way, uh, when I stick this uh, arm LED down with the VHB on it, it's gonna be in the perfect location so that these wires don't get all bunched up and shit. So there we go. One down, three to go. Uh, oh, cool. Good find, Frank. Uh, Frank found different colors of the little buckets of Plasti Dip. Ed K says I got black Plasti Dip at Home Depot. Uh, in the can or in the in the spray can or in the the dipping can. Beep Tube says I bet you can make Kydex guards for the arms at home really easily. That's an interesting idea, Beep Tube. I know Kydex is pretty heavy though. I wonder what they would weigh. Luke Beam saying what's up. Suave FPV saying hey guy, uh, what those hands do? Uh, they work on quads. Tiago says what's up, Tiago? Uh, the times you refer to Team Motor project projects in each stream uh, would already be more than enough for at least a motor sponsorship. Yeah, it's true, Tiago. But I mean, uh, it's hard to it's hard to show that. To a company, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to kind of convince them of that. I guess I could, like, make an edit. Oh, man, that would take forever. I could, like, download a whole bunch of these videos and then just chop out me saying T-Motor over and over and over again and then make an edit and send it to them. Um, oh, actually, I mean, the, the, the real deal with sponsors is, is, is just you got to have a huge audience. I mean, that's the only... Having a, a, a gigantic audience is really it's sort of, for them, the only safe way that they can uh, send you a bunch of money for free and know that they're going to get somewhat of a return on it. What the fuck is going... Okay, there it goes. Um, yeah. These companies, you know, no, nobody at any of these FPV companies is driving around in a Ferrari. Um... So, sending a whole bunch of free stuff out to strangers, like, that's, that's a risk. That's like a real risk that they take, that, that they're going to send a bunch of free shit out. And, and unfortunately, uh, there are, I'm not going to name names, but, I mean, there are plenty of pro pilots who, they get their free stuff and then they don't do any marketing. Um, it's happened many, many, many times. So, you know, these companies get burned... And, like, they're going to remember that. And, um, yeah, so it's kind of a, it's just a thing. It's just a thing, guys. The, the, the most important thing, though, is just to not think about sponsorships. And, and if, if you're doing really well, they're going to find you. Um, and then what's nice about that is you then have some sort of leverage, right? Like, if you go to them and, and, and beg for a sponsorship, they're liable to say, like, uh, okay, we'll send you four motors, right? Whereas, like, if they come to you, they're asking you to do something for them, and you can be like, oh, all right, cool. So uh, you're going to send me 40 motors, right? You know what I mean? A little leverage there. All right, we got some motor screws, and might as well throw the third one in. Give you completionists uh, an opportunity to take a sigh of relief. 
I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Alright. So there we go. Motor number two is full blown done. Motor number one, you're next. Uh, BeepTube says, trying to figure out the weight of a square inch of average thickness Kydex that might be lighter than TPU, considering you can use less for more effect. That would be dope. Alec Dvornik says, Newbie Drone 0802 motors is the one with <clears throat> red leads. Am I clockwise or counterclockwise? Alec, I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, but what I do is I just make sure I put them in, in the diagonal so that I either have to reverse all four motors, or I only have to reverse, or I don't have to reverse any. Um, that's a good question. Maybe there's like a product picture on their website where you can see the the colors. Uh, I don't you, I don't really use their motors either. So uh, since they refuse to make an 0802 with enough KV to fly half decent. Um, just before this, I actually did a little bit of flying in uh, in downtown Alpharetta for um, a little passion project for one of the uh, one of the yogis at the uh, yogi studio. One of the instructors, uh, Lily. She's super cool. Her and her uh, boyfriend Michael came out, and uh, we picked a cool little spot. We had a nice little golden hour flying session. I did uh, two batteries with the Cinesplore, uh, two batteries with the 5 inch rig, and then four batteries, unfortunately only two of which the Insta360 Go recorded uh, with the little 65mm Tiny Whoop. So yeah, look out for some more yogurt stuff, which you guys are probably sick of by now, but you know what? Screw you! If you're sick of if you're sick of staring at cute girls' butts and yoga pants, I don't really know what to tell you, other than uh, check your pulse, because it should be racing. All right, we are gonna we are I am stripping these with my fingernails, because your fingernails will never ever ever nick one of the strands of wire, and. Your fingernails are on the end of your fingers, so they're always readily available. So do it. Use them. It's the safest possible way to strip a wire. Is the... Is the real tech behind it. Alright. And so let's get these guys tinned up here first. And then we'll zap it on and be good to go. Where'd the solder go? Jacob FPV with a $10 super chat. He says, fine guys, I'll start again. If we all pitch in about $7 each, we can get Aaron that last 500 needed for his computer. Collective strong. Thank you, Jackalope. Jackalope is the, uh, has become the, the super chat cheerleader. And I like it. I enjoy that he's willing to get you guys all riled up. All right, so let's get some tinning going on. What? Why is stop rotating motor? There we go. One more. All right. Oh my God, T Bird is calling him again. It's all happening again. The exact same sequence of events is going on. Uh, that goes to a one. That goes to a four. 14, 12 out of 12.99. Alex Dvornik says 420 plus 280 equals seven. Wish I had more, but I can do seven. Alec, you know that I appreciate absolutely everything. Seven plus two is nine. There we go. Thank you, guys. Aber the Ham says, I want to know the donation hype train. Get some. 19 goes to 29. 
Riot 9 for Pepsi and Hikers. See, so that doesn't go into the... That doesn't go into the, uh... Into the gear fund. Riot 9 just wants me to do... Do drugs and bang whores. <laughs> Thank you, Riot 9. I swear I will spend your money on soft drinks and climbing mountains. Just kidding. I'll spend it on ladies of the night. As you properly would like me to. <laughs> uh, the, the, I'm not going to scroll up in the chat. So if, I, if you tagged me and I didn't read it, do me a favor. Just copy it and paste it. Um, and then I'll read it. But I, I think I was caught up on chat. I think I was pretty caught up. But if I wasn't, hook a brother up. And I'm, I'm the brother that you're going to be hooking up in, in this case. All right. One motor wire. Two motor wires. In a second. Three motor wires. Up, up, up. There is number two. Who does he work for? Here comes number three. Okay, let's take a look with a loop. And oh my god, I should be given a Nobel Peace Prize for that soldering job. Ugh, I'm gonna bring this soldering job with me to the clubs, and I'm gonna show cute show it to cute girls, and they're just gonna their their pants are just gonna liquefy. Oh god, <laughs> Christ! <laughs> that was that's awkward. Sorry for making it awkward, guys. I'm not sorry. I did that on purpose. I like it to be as awkward as possible around here. It really, it uh, it really thins the crowd out, and and only the uh, only the true hardcore maniacs stay around. That's the uh, that's my secret. <clears throat> you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just tightening screws. It's. Uh, it's about as as boring as it gets. Tightening the third screw. That's what she said. Here with him said, "Wow, I'm uncomfortable." Oh uh, shit! That means I'm doing a good job. All right, we got that. We got this guy. Let me just crank these. Oh wow! I did not have that cranked down nearly enough. That's better. And that one is buried. Okay, motor two is done. We're gonna push this VHB down and move on to the next. And then we gotta put some, uh, we're gonna put some foam feet on. And we're also going to put either zip ties or maybe, uh, maybe wrap strap uh, to hold those little fellas down. VHB first. Alec Dvornik says, I'm copying Super Chats this time as they come. Thanks, dude. DQ says, there are 69 people in the chat. Anything goes. <laughs> Tiago says, uh, I don't know. D&D &D is now a Hollywood trend, so everything's possible. Is it really? BeepTube says, square inch of 1.5 millimeter thick kydex weighs a bit under one gram. Here's my question, BeepTube. So um, all of the kydex work that I've seen, um, it's really hard to get it to, to make... Uh, like really tight bends. So one of the one of the challenges with the arm end protectors is uh, not losing them basically. Uh, and my w of what I've seen of Kydex, I can't imagine a way to get it to um, to wrap around the little devil horn enough that it wouldn't. Um, you know what I'm saying? that it wouldn't just fall the hell off. Uh, so yeah, I feel like that would be the challenge, but I haven't played with Kydex in a long time. I, I, 
I was uh, I was kind of all about Kydex back uh, towards the end of Airsoft when I started to get into tactical knives. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe there's some new tech uh, or there's new ways of softening it up so you can really mold it. But yeah, I feel like that would be the, uh, that would be the big challenge is uh, figuring out a way to shape it around the end of the arm so that it'll actually hang on and not just fall off. Speaking of tactical knives, I, so um, now that Kristen's gone, right, like there's a lot of like empty walls and empty spaces in the apartment here. Uh, so I've been like breaking out all of my artwork that's not hung up um, and uh, just like other random shit that's not, that's been kind of packed away. And I found, I completely forgot, uh, I met a, uh, a sword maker at one point uh, when, I was, when I was in this world, weird world of tactical knives. And uh, he actually made me, he wanted to do a, uh, he was looking to kind of get into the tactical knife stuff, so he wanted an excuse uh, to make something... Instead of making a sword, he wanted to make, like, a, a fixed blade tactical, uh, thing. And I just happened to meet him at the right time. And so I was the, the first one that he made it for. Uh, it was double-edged. And then I had another friend of mine who worked with Kydex make a Kydex sheath for me. And what was cool is, uh... The, uh, the sword maker took measurements of my hand and he made the, uh, the hand guard like specifically for my hand. Um, and I found it. I'd forgotten I'd packed it away. Hold on. Let me go grab it. I'll be right back. I'm coming. Yes, there is. I think this is actually the only uh, the only fixed blade that I have. Uh, everything else that I had were were tactical folders. Um, but yeah, I totally forgot that I had this. Uh, so yeah, my buddy. Oh god, I forget his name. Uh, made me the Kydex. And uh, the uh, this is the actual man. I forget his I forget his name. I think it was Tinker Pierce is his name. But yeah, he made the, uh, he took measurements for my hand, and this, as you can see, is perfect. It is like exactly the, the width of my fingers. And then yeah, so it's double-edged, edged on the back, edged on the front, and then slight little crenellations here, which is kind of hard to see. Um, and then it's, I think he did a black oxide, um, and then he asked me what wood I wanted, and I was like, black wood. <laughs> so he did like a, a black wood, but yeah, look at this thing, man. It's beautiful. He did such a good job with this. I haven't cut a goddamn thing with it, but this is basically like the, the home defense knife. Um, God forbid I ever need to defend myself or my family. Uh, this will be what it gets done with. And uh, yeah, just really, really cool. Just really cool that like a, a sword maker did this, you know? It's got like such a sword maker vibe to it. Um, so yeah, we, we talked about it. I wanted him to do the Tonto tip here, um, and then, yeah, I forget what else. Oh wow, look at the date on it. Jesus, that was a long time ago. It's not going to focus. It's from 2005. And this is the 174th uh, blade that he's created. So yeah, really nice. Full tang. This is the, this is the tang in here. Sometimes they'll, they'll stop the tang up here, and then you just have handle. But when, when you stop the, the tang up here, the knife tends to not be as well balanced. If you run the full tang all the way back, um, it's got a better sort of balance to it. But yeah, look, how, look at how it fits in my hand. See that? It's crazy. It's so cool. Yeah, it's like incredibly comfortable. I have a weird past, people. A weird, weird pass. Yeah, Kydex is fun. Kydex has this nice, like, retention to it. So that you can actually hang this 
you could hang this like this. It would be kind of sketchy to do this because I can probably get it to come out. Nah, that's pretty good. That's in there pretty good. Yeah, Kydex is fun because that and then pull down to to break the stream. What the hell's going on? Don't shit the bed on me again, computer, please. Did the stream just just uh, just lock up for you guys, or is that just me? Um. See, the only thing you got to be careful with is Ky with Kydex is when Kydex is really deep like this. You can you can uh, Ken Hill. I, w I was into knives for far too long to cut myself. Don't don't ever worry about that. Um, yeah, you you make the Kydex. You make some retention in here for the Kydex. And then it, when it comes out, watch it kind of open up. See how it opens up? And you can actually adjust this. Like, you can just heat this Kydex up with, like, a hair dryer, and then you can just pinch this point for more or less retention. So you can sort of adjust how much force it takes uh, to get it out of the sheath. It's really cool stuff. Kydex is a really interesting plastic. It did lock up. Okay, very weird. Um, all right, I'm gonna put that on the couch. In the ki oh god, I almost threw up. In the Kydex, so that I don't kill myself on it. Um, we get caught up on chat here. Kevin Smith says you're one whacked dude. You have no idea, Kevin. Michael Blade says, do you use CA on your foam feet? I do not, Michael. Um, I use the Impulse RC foam, uh, which is kind of special and, and works really, really, really well. Michael Blade says, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, right? It's gorgeous. Uh, BeepTube says, I know of Michael Tinker. Michael Tinker Pierce. That's his name. Michael Tinker Pierce. Yep, that's it. Uh, mainly his swords. I considered one or two of them when I was buying that kind of thing. Wow, I can't believe I remembered his name. That's I'm really staggered that I remembered his name. Tinker. Man, I haven't. Uh, I. Uh, Michael Tinker Pierce. I'll be damned. Oh, his website's totally different. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Wow, it's crazy. That is crazy. Cool guy. Really, really cool guy. I met him at... Oh, here. I'll show you guys. I met him at uh, Blade, which is a knife, a tactical knife convention here in Atlanta, actually. Drove all the way down uh, to Atlanta from New Jersey way back when to go to a fucking... Um, Tactical knife convention. What a nerd, huh? Uh, I wonder if he ever did anything with these smaller guys. Doesn't look like it. Although, maybe. U.S. military swords? What the hell does that mean? Huh. Alright, back to... Uh... Wait, what's Gladius? Art Gladius? Is that... I remember the word Gladius. No, okay. No, that's something different. Yeah, like, I wonder if somewhere on the website is this. I doubt it. Oh, you know, it might be in here. Because he, it, it is considered a dagger, basically. Nah. That would be like a tactical dagger, basically. Crazy. God, I haven't thought about... I haven't thought about this in a while. Okay, moving on. Uh, Alec Dvornik says, I second the Whoop Tour. Also, that's a really sweet knife. Uh, do they have a site for commissions? I don't think so, but um, yeah, I mean, he's a sword maker, so he's doing everything um, by hand. So you could just uh, message him. I'm, sure, I'm sure he would uh, he would hook it up. Uh, Michael Blade says, I love that show, Forged in Fire. Yeah, that is a really cool show. That is a really cool show. T-Bird says, I'm sorry to ask, but where is Harry? Uh, he's in there on the bed. I have him for a little bit longer. Um, 
Richard says, it's good on my side. Uh, Jory is here, says, do you fly any 85 millimeter whoops? Um, I don't, Jory. Uh, the 85 the 85 mil whoop that I have, it's too big and too heavy and too fast to fly inside, but then it's not fast enough to really fly outside. So, like... If I got a gig in, like, an auditorium, it would work in there, uh, but I don't. Abraham says, if you like if, if you like knives, swords, metallurgy, you seriously need to stop what you're doing and check out Random Hands, the most satisfying channel on YouTube. Um, I, I never really got into, like, swords and metallurgy. Um, wow. Uh, YouTube is having a really hard time with the stream tonight. I don't know what the hell's happening. There's all kinds of drop frames and shit. Um... Uh, but I'm still going to check it out, Aber. Uh, he says, just skim through one of the Random Hands videos. You'll be instantly hooked. Uh, I think everybody on here would be into it, too. Um, I will check that out tonight for sure. Drain Druid says, the stimulus of Monday Super Chats live chat uh, isn't available in the re replay. Uh, I don't uh, because um, Motoref uh, actually went through and, and took care of it because he's a goddamn baller. Uh, thanks again, Motoref. Very, very cool of you. Uh, uh, random hands. Awesome. I am interested. Alright, there we go. Back to work. Back to work. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Aber. Very, very cool of you, my man. Much appreciated. You guys are the tits. Here we go. Motor number... What is this, four? Yeah, motor number four. Not the fourth motor, but motor number four. Uh, okay. Is the soldering iron still at temperature? It is. Thanks for not cooling off, Weller. You're my boy, Blue. Alright, first one going down here. A little bit too much solder on there, but it's, it's better to have a little bit too much than not quite enough. So we're just going to leave it. And with how often I blow these motors up, none of this really matters. <laughs> like, like, I could do a really half-assed job of this, and it would be totally fine, but um, that's just not how I do things. I'm willing to spend three extra seconds to have this done properly and look good. And so should you, because uh, these things are big and fast and dangerous. Let's check it out, and oh my god, yet again, your boy has created art with a soldering iron. <laughs> okay, so let's lighten this one up a little bit. And... and Flying. Uh, let me find, where'd that go? Where'd you go, little buddy? Where'd you run off to? What the hell? Speaking of tactical folders, this is more. This is more what I was. What I was kind of into. Uh, this is an Emerson. Uh, God, what is this? Uh, oh yeah, Mini Commander. It is an Emerson Mini Commander. Um, tactical folding, three material knife, G10 plastic up on top here, titanium in there, and then S30V uh, stainless blade and uh, and pocket clip. And then Emerson, Emerson kind of is well known for this little piece here, which is called the wave. When you when you pull this out of your pocket, this catches the edge of your pants and deploys the knife. So it actually. Um, by the time you get it out of your pocket, the blade is out and it's good to go. Emerson makes really, really nice knives, and they're not that expensive. Tactical knives can get, like, hideously expensive pretty quick. 
uh, but Emerson knives are very strong um, and uh, they don't cost a ton of money. If when, when people used to ask me like what should I get in terms of a tactical knife, I, I almost always would recommend Emerson because like I got into like striders and, and some other like really, really expensive shit and like yeah, they're super nice, but like kind of unnecessarily nice, um, I guess you could say. Uh, not, you know, most people aren't putting knives through car doors, and that's what, uh, that's what Emerson's are basically created to do, to do, uh, I'm sorry, um, Strider's were created to do. Strider used to be a company run by, uh, Mick and Dwayne, and they were both, uh, ex-Special Forces, and so, yeah, they wanted to make absolute, like, no-nonsense knives that they could do absolutely anything with, and... Uh, some of the shit that those guys would tell us stories about was pretty gnarly. Oh, come on. Don't be a jerk, VHB. Eh, whatever. Eh, no, not whatever. It's just gonna stick to the arm again and get all jacked up. Let me fix it. Let me fix it. Okay. All right, so yeah, I added a little bit of a, a washer to these guys so that they don't dig into the uh, TPU. That's uh, kind of important if you don't want the TPU to rip off. You just want to make sure that if you do that, that the screw is long enough um, because, you know, the TPU is going to boost the screw up a little bit and then the washer is going to boost it up a little bit. You got to really make sure that um, you then don't have enough thread engagement in the... Uh, the the stator of the motor because that ain't good but yeah with the washers on here i can come in here and like really crank these guys down which is probably completely out of focus but i mean i'm just screwing in screws use your imagination all right one and two Cool, and then we're gonna throw the third one in real quick here off camera just to get it done, and then we'll work on the last of the motors. Uh, I only use three screws per motor. I have never had a stator uh, let go from the fourth one not being there. Uh, I always do one, two, three. This is the front of the quad, so most of the impacts are gonna happen in this direction or in this direction, um, and then in the rear, I do the outer three because most hits are going to come from this direction or this direction or this direction. Uh, Alec Dvornik says there's a list with timestamps in the comments. I don't know what that means. Uh, Drendrid says you still need a list of Monday Super. Oh, no, we got that. Uh, CMY KFPV says PayPal. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Let me get my mail going here. Oh, I don't need that. Uh... Eh, maybe I will someday. Oh, 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 I gotta scroll up. Damn! Steven Steinbaker, CMYK FPV. If you guys need graphic design done, and I find out that you didn't go to CMYK FPV. I'm going to murder your whole family and, and their families. Uh, CMYK FPV with a $42 PayPal. Bro, thank you. Holy shitters. So that makes this turn into a 6. And then that 9 goes to 11, making that a 7. And then 1... 1471 towards the M1 iMac. God damn, CMYK. Why'd you, CMYK, why, why are you Steven Steinbaker and not CMYK? What'd you do? What's wrong with CMYK FPV, man? Or is this a separate, do you have a separate account? Dude, thank you. Super generous. Jesus, man. Amazing. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Robert Timko Jr. I don't know who that is here on uh, on on YouTube name. 
But Robert Timko. Oh wait, no, that was the the job that I did earlier. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that was a fiber job I did earlier. Sorry. Uh, Seth Inman says, "Where did all that money come from?" Uh, on Monday night's live stream, uh, everybody in the chat just completely lost their minds and just started sending me all the money in the world. Um, Jackalope. Uh, Jackalope FPV did a super chat and he was like, I dare you guys to, to match this and, and we'll, uh, he, he, I forget what he said, but he basically said like, I bet you guys won't all donate so that, uh, so that we fill the thing up tonight. And then everybody was like, well, fuck you. You won't tell me that I'm not going to do something. And then the whole world lost their mind and it was just hysterical. You should watch it. Monday stream was, was pretty, it was a good one. Uh, yeah, you guys are, are absolutely outrageous, and I love it. Uh, Aber the Ham says, head, uh, stop by, back to the hospital, 5 a.m., cheers. Uh, thanks for hanging, Aber. I will catch you on, uh, I think we talk on Instagram. BeepTube says, at a certain point, knives and stuff like that become a luxury tool like a Rolex. So true. So true. With, with tactical knives, though, what's cool is, like, they do get a little bit stronger eventually, but yeah, then they start like doing all kinds of wacky flame heat treatments on the TI to make cruel patterns, and then it's not really any stronger. But up to up to the point where I went, it, it, they were yeah, I was buying the strongest possible thing. Um, Alec Dvornik says I made timestamps since I missed the stream. I grabbed super chats while I did that. Oh, nice, Alec. Very cool. Um, I will get the, uh, the timestamps, uh, dropped in there probably tomorrow. Very cool. Very, very cool. Thanks, dude. Uh, double A is, ha double A is hanging with the noobs. What noobs? Is there another, uh, is there another, am I on top of somebody else's stream? Um, uh, Sethman says, uh, looking forward to a better stream bit rain. Uh, I hope, I doubt though. I think that's a Comcast problem. Uh, Tim Coker says we made it rain. <laughs> Indeed. V-Man says, uh, who says I can't have a few beers and let the money fly? Hell yeah. Hell yes. You guys are too, too kind. Too kind, fellas. Or are you just kind enough? All right, let's strip a couple more motor wires here, tin them up, zap it on, VHB the race wire down, swap an antenna, and then I will have two working um, glides again. And then maybe we'll fix the... Th oh, no, no, we'll definitely fix the third one because all I have to do on the red glide is swap a uh, motor belt. So, yeah. By the end of tonight, I will have three, uh, all three of my working glides will be uh, back together. I guess I can't call them working glides. I guess they're just basically the free, well, no. So the, this one and the red one, these are the full-blown freestyle glides. Um, the, I have actually, as of tonight, um, I put the, uh, the Hero 8. Uh, TPU onto the really clean glide. So what I've, what I've always tried to do here is have two glides that I pound the shit out of and then a third one that's just a, like a little bit cleaner, a, a little bit less beat up. Um, and typically on a given flying day, I will usually not leave until the, fr until the red glide is blown up. So the red glide almost always blows up with the 20 by 20 ESC. Which is great, because that puts ma the maximum amount of stress into that ESC, into that Acon 20x20, um, to really test its durability. And then the, the second, and then, so almost always, I'll get the, uh, the purple glide and start pounding on that. Um, and then if I break that purple glide... The third one, which is the violet TPU glide, usually by that point, I'm kind of like, okay, it, it, I'll either stop and just and just call it there, or um, I'll like kind of back off a little bit and just be like, okay, I've you know, there's no sense hand grenading three rigs. Let's just fly. 
like a sane person. Um, so yeah, that third, that third regular old 2306 freestyle rig, uh, I've now put a Hero 8 mount on because it's just nice. It's, it's just nice to have a freestyle rig, a lightweight freestyle rig that'll carry a Hero 8. Um, the, the chase rig, the problem, so I have the, the glide that's set up to be the chase rig, but the problem with that is it's got a fucking 40 degree up tilt melt on, mount on it. So having the GoPro at 40 degrees, like, you're hauling ass all the time. Um, the, the Hero 8 mount that I put onto the freestyle glide is 30 degrees, so that's a, that's more of a, you know, multi-purpose kind of rig. Um, I realized this a while ago, but then I, I really noticed it uh, over the weekend, or no, I'm sorry, last week rather, when I was in Greenville hanging out uh, with a couple of my favorite ladies, and uh, I was flying around this this little lake spot, and it was it was like a smaller little body of water, and the the chase rig, which was all I had, it was just way too fast. Like I, I was just. It, it just felt like it made the, the spot feel very small. Uh, and I was like, man, you know, I, I, I really wish I'd had just a regular freestyle rig here. Um, so yeah, now I do. And, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put, uh, if, like, if I'm at like a really fancy freestyle spot, right, and I blow up the first two, and I, and I still wanna, like really go in like let's say let's say there's big there's some like dive that I'm really hell bent on getting or something like that um, I can just pull the uh, the session mount off of the first one of the first two and plop that onto the clean one and then destroy the clean one as well or I mean hopefully not destroy it hopefully do the the thing that I've been trying to do yeah but typically uh, I won't Typically, it's like, all right, well, I broke two rigs. That's a good place to stop. And then the other really nice thing about having the third identical rig is that, like, God forbid you break something that um, you need to order a replacement for. You don't have to wait for that replacement. You can rob it off of the other rig or just fly the other rig. But usually I'll rob it off the other rig. Um, to try to keep the, the, the violet rig as clean as possible. Because, man, once you start, like, really flying these things hard freestyle around concrete, it, it's pretty incredible how beat up they get and how quickly they get beat up. It's really, it's really quite the thing. So I, there is enough solder on this third one, but um, it just creeps me out when you can see the strands of wire. You're supposed to be able to see the strands of wire, but I always like to put a little bit of extra solder on. Let's check it with the loop, and oh yeah. That's good stuff. Alright, cool. So we're good to go. Let's just uh, push on some of these joints just to make absolutely sure that they're fully solid. Oh yeah, we're all set. Cool, put in a couple more motor screws and then we can move to the antenna action. All right, and what are we going inside? Yeah, okay. Well, it looks like this motor's lined up just about perfectly, so I don't think I'll need to uh, adjust that VHB placement. Seth Inman says, I'll print you a 30 degree for free uh, if you pay shipping, lol. Uh, so Seth, the uh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, the All of the GoPro mounts that I run are from BMC 3D. Uh, Brent's uh, design is better than any other design that I've found. Um, and his prices are very, very reasonable. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of times he just sends me stuff. But, um, yeah, his uh, his uh, glide 
STLs uh, are just unparalleled. They're, they're front load, they've got a spot for the ND filter. Um, they're, um, yeah, I really, really, really like them. So let's kick this top plate off and we'll get this antenna swapped out. I'm pretty sure that this antenna blew up uh, in a crash, so we're gonna swap on a TrueRC uh, OCP antenna, uh, which is a little bigger, but a little more durable. These, uh, these little singularities are great, but because of the fact that they're so small, the tolerances are really tight, so when you start smashing the shit out of them, uh, they come out of tune and you lose a lot of performance when that happens. So I'm probably kind of done running these uh, singularities on the um, on the freestyle builds. They're also kind of expensive. It's, it's $20 an antenna for the singularities. Uh, the OCPs are like 12 bucks. So, probably going to be sticking with OCPs moving forward. I will still use the singularities on micros, though, because micros tend to not hit hard enough because they just don't go as fast uh, to, to smash the antennas. The antennas are very durable. It's just, you know, a, a five inch rig will go 100 miles an hour, and then you put 100 miles an hour into metal or concrete, and it's like, it's really pretty amazing that anything survives. <laughs> like, I've had countless crashes where, like, I am sure that there's just going to be a pile of dust when I get there. Like, I'm sure of it. There's just a 0% chance that anything is left of the rig because... You know, I smashed it into a, a metal pole at Mach 7000, and I get there, and, like, nothing will be wrong. It's like, wait, what? How? It's, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible, the, the punishment that these things will withstand. <laughs> it kind of, it's kind of one of those things that never ceases to amaze me in this, uh, in this hobby. Uh, Seth, they're usually like 14 bucks or 16 bucks or something like that. Uh, Bob Knox just says, you were in Greenville and didn't hit me up. I didn't, Bob. Um, I was going there for a like, six-hour period uh, to hang out uh, with uh, a couple of the, uh, the, the, the film crew on the, uh, the short film uh, that I most recently worked on in... Um, in Charleston, and uh, I had a very limited time to be there, so I didn't, uh, I didn't hit you or T Bird or anybody else up that's that's in that area, uh, because yeah, it was just it was about getting to spend time with with uh, them. Gabriel is uh, is going back to L.A. Uh, probably like for good, um, and then Summers is just awesome and around so yeah it was a very very short little day trip it was uh kind of right on top of Kristen moving out too so it was uh i just wanted to be with my girls for a, a little bit we became the the three of us became a a force of nature on the uh on the set of that film. Some of you guys will remember me ranting and raving about how much fun that I had there. And uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's probably the last time that, that the three of us will be able to get uh, all together. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that Rachel Summers can, uh, can make it up here to Atlanta and hang out. That would be super cool. Come on. How the hell is this? 
How the hell is this uh, shrink wrap shrimp wrap on here so tight? It's like it's glued to it. Jesus, it kind of is. What the fuck? Did I put glue in here? I feel like I might have put uh, welders in here. It's certainly acting like I did. I think I did. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I guess I did. Oh, we damned. I haven't done that in a while. I think I maybe remember doing that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe not, though. Maybe I did it to, like, show you guys the full... Maybe we were, like, talking about, like, oh, here's everything that you can do to make UFL uh, antennas stronger than MMCX. That might have been uh, why I did that. Usually I'm too lazy for it. I mean, it's a really good idea to do that. But uh, usually I just... I'm too lazy. So I'm just trying to kind of scrape some of it off to make sure that I get a good connection between the UFL and the little nipple. Should be fine. Yeah, we're good. Okay. New antenna. Coming at you. Wait, didn't I already get one out? I did. I did. So we're going to do a little bit of prep on this antenna to just make it even more durable. And what that means is we're going to uh, make this joint here a little bit stronger with a piece of uh, with a piece of shrink wrap and the, a shrimp wrap rather sorry and then I'm actually going to run the same uh, I'm going to run another piece of shrimp wrap up here on the cap to make sure that the top of this thing doesn't blow off because I think that the seam yeah, the seam is up top here. So let's put a couple of pieces of shrink wrap on here. And uh, we'll have a little tiny bit more durability out of this thing. Frank Nicholas says some shrink wrap is adhesive on the inside. Um, the, uh, I, forget, I used to know what that was, what it was called. I, the, the name escapes me at the moment. Um, this is not that shrink wrap. Uh, this, when you see me using the red and the black, you can actually kind of see it. If, if you look at it, you'll see like a different layer on the inside. It's almost also kind of shiny on the inside. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good to have that in your arsenal. For sure. Um... I'm looking for one that's kind of just the right. I can probably stretch this one out to get it up over there, but then it's going to want to. Well, let's see. This one should be okay. Cut it down a little bit, though, make it a little shorter. All right. So, little known secret with shrink wrap is that you can stretch it a little bit so i'm trying to get the shrink wrap up over this initial part of the plastic here and this is obviously nowhere near big enough but we can just really gently stretch it out a little bit and then when we shrink it back down it's going to go all the way back down um, to the, the maximum shrinkage, just like my boner. So yeah, just carefully stretch it out, and now look how much bigger it is, isn't that cool? So now we can go in here, and then I'll be able to get it up over the little plastic bit, maybe. Or maybe I didn't stretch it out quite enough. So after you stretch it out, you got to be kind of quick because it tries to return back to its original uh, size. 
but it looks like I just got it in time. Yeah, there we go. And I did cut this a little too short, uh, but that's okay. All right, so yeah, see that? Now it's on there and uh, you wanna shrink up the bottom part first so that it hopefully doesn't uh, pull itself off. Every time I talk, I blow out the, uh, the thing. And there we go. So now we got a little bit more strength there on, the, uh, on that little joint where the UFL actually meets the plastic itself. And that's slick. Now we're gonna throw another piece up here uh, to hopefully keep the, the head of this thing from popping off. Um, if you don't crash 7,000 times in a row into concrete, you really don't need to do any of this shit. This is really, um, this is kind of preventive maintenance. This is only really needed if you crash really hard, really often, and you hate making repairs. <laughs> Um, you could definitely make the argument that that's what happens when you're not careful. Uh, you could definitely make the argument that, uh, just let the damn thing break because by the time the cap gets broken off, uh, you've hit it hard enough that the, uh, the element is going to be out of tune. Uh, but... I've found that sometimes that's not true. Sometimes the I'll break the cap off and the antenna will still work totally fine. Um, and in that case, by taking another 60 seconds to throw a piece of shrimp wrap up on the top of this thing, um, yeah, you saved yourself a uh, uh, another repair. A lot of the stuff I do is is kind of like that, like. Spend a little bit more time right now, um, which for me, you know, like it's it's all me making content, so like it it really 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 works for me, because um, I can, you know, show you guys these little tips and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely a fan of doing whatever I can up front to make the rig absolutely as durable as possible, um, so that. Uh, the, the repairs are as infrequent as possible. If that makes sense. So we're gonna shrink or stretch this one out as well. A little bit more carefully this time. And there we go. So, and I just put it kind of like on the corner. I want it to, I want it to wrap over the top a little bit, but I also want it to be on the flat spot just so that it doesn't, uh, on the flat part rather, just so it doesn't peel off. You don't want it to, uh, to peel off. God damn it. See, so that's the problem with, with stretching the shrink wrap is it becomes kind of fragile. Um, and you just gotta be really careful. Uh... Let's use a little piece of this. Yeah, I gotta stay organized, fairly functional. It's, um, my brain does not work otherwise. Um, if I don't stay organized, it's, uh, it's a big old shit show. Is this the same? Yeah, this is even bigger, actually. Wait a second, don't I have big, thick shrink wrap up here? Shrimp wrap up here? keep saying it wrong. I keep forgetting that it's called shrimp wrap, not shrink wrap. I do, that's right. Uh, but I think it's, is it a little too big? What's this one? I got a couple rolls here. Okay, so this is this. And then the next size up is absolutely gigantic. But, you know, this size, I won't have to cut it. Or I won't have to, sh uh, uh, what's the word? Stretch it. That's the word. 
But Jesus. I need scissors to cut it. Good Lord. Some wide shrink wrap there. I am, uh, I'm backed up on chat. Hold on, friends. Okay. Put these guys back. And this fella. Ow. Yeah. Okay, I've actually never used this um, on the... Wow, that's really big. Okay, that's what she said. Uh, this does increase the weight of the antenna, which I don't love. Uh, but I, I really put a lot of value into durability. Like, to some extent, durability over all else. Within reason, of course. Okay, so let's... This is starting to move around. Get back there. There we go. Okay, now we're talking. Oops, and then I... Accidentally rubbed against it and damn near ripped it off. Try this again. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. All right, cool. So yeah, you, you wanna make sure you get enough heat into it where um, it really shrinks down on the body of the antenna itself, because otherwise it's just gonna fall the hell off. There we have it. That should be good. I usually just push down on a little bit just to really get it bonded to the plastic as much as possible. So there we go. That's how I fully prep an antenna so that it'll hopefully last as long as possible. Uh, BeepTube has six singularities in service right now. They're so good. Uh, Bob Noxious says, just pulling your chain. Brother, uh, T-Bird's not in that area, but um, he's... I forget what tally is in. Frank Nicholas says, some shrink wrap. Oh, we got that. William Loesch says, favorite antennas for your IRC tramp. I've got another UFL to SMA adapter to put in, but I have a feeling I'll keep breaking them. Um, running my spare whip is getting me worse video so far. How should I mount uh, on the glide frame? William, I would just do it the way that I do it, man. I, I, I've spent a lot of time mounting antennas in different ways on the glides. Um... Sedman says, I don't know you use True RC antennas, can, uh, antennas Canada for the win. Yeah, I've used True RC for a while now. Um, Jackalobe says, why shrimp wrap the VTX antenna? Um, it, it prevents the cap. All of these uh, antennas have, there are two pieces of plastic. And um, so they usually have like a little cap on top. And if you hit it hard enough, the cap will break off. Um so yeah, if you shrink wrap on the end here, uh, that keeps the cap on, which makes it more durable. Um, and then the other question was, yeah, how to mount it. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm a, this is the best way that I've found to mount them. Um, you prep the antenna, like I just showed you there. You snap on the UFL here. You put another piece of shrimp wrap to pull that UFL on, which we're about to do. And then you use one of these little TPU jib jabs um, to hold the uh, the direct UFL up and at an angle. And uh, yeah, that setup has been really, really durable for me. And also very lightweight. It saves you about 10 grams over a UFL to SMA and then an SMA mount, and then an SMA antenna. Uh, so yeah, I really, really dig this setup that I'm doing right now over any other setup I've ever done. And I've, man, I've tried like damn near everything. So now we've got that on there. We just get that guy shrimped up. So now, 
the the shrink wrap is is holding on to the UFL so that the UFL isn't going to go anywhere. Um, and then we're going to give this kind of a second to dry, not dry, but harden. Or we'll just get it hot again. Didn't look like it had shrunk all the way up on the back there. Now, there we go. That's better. Um, and then we use a simple little piece of TPU here to get it going up at a 45 degree angle. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to put a little bit of heat into this VHB here to bring some of its stickiness back to life. And then we're going to put the uh, tramp on down here on the newly refreshed VHB. We'll put a little wrap of this crap strap, or I can replace it with actual wrap strap, maybe. Is this one going to be long enough? Nah, not quite. Do I have a piece that's long enough, I wonder? I do. Look at that. We're going to replace this with actual wrap strap. Uh, and now this is just here uh, as like another little bit of retention for the VTX and the receiver. Because if you hit really hard, um, even the uh, even the VHB will let go, and your your VTX and receiver can flop around. I mean, usually that's on a crash where you're not going to be taken back off, uh, but still. I always like to have more retention on shit, especially shit that's near the propellers, right? Like, you do not want your VTX and your receiver getting pulled into the propeller. It's kind of in a sketchy spot for that, so. There we go. Oh, this, this wrap strap is broken. Let me get it out of there. We're going to replace it. It's not broken, it's torn. Rubber doesn't break, it tears. All right, put this one in here now. Come on. Come on. There we go. Trick to the wrap strap is you put your needle nose pliers through and then you use them to grab and then you pull through. Like that. And then you just rotate the big booger. If you're on 15 mil standoffs, you have to rotate the big booger down and out of the way. And put it on the side or on the bottom. And then you're good to go. You have like full retention. Everything is together and happy. All is right with the world. This shrink wrap is now cool. So we can put a little bit of an angle in here. You can see it kind of pulls on the, uh, uh, pulls on the shrimp wrap. I used to do two layers of, of shrink wrap here, uh, but I haven't really been doing that lately. Um, this is kind of moving around a little bit. Um, yeah, maybe I will. Mm, nah, it'll be all right. The, this guy has enough retention where where it'll um, it'll grab onto here pretty good. Uh, and as usual, I've forgotten. You want to put an extra piece of shrink wrap on here that you can then run over this guy, but you have to put it on before you connect the UFL. And I tend to forget. Um, so here's the here's the kind of cheater way to get around this: is you remove this standoff, and then you can rotate it out of the way. Here, I'll show you. So if you remove this standoff, Jesus, how long of a screw do I have going through there? Well, that's about right. Uh, put that there. You can just uh, move this out of the way, and then you can get to the uh, you can get to the shrink wrap here. So what do I want to do here? I want to pull this off. It's kind of annoying. And I'm gonna pop the UFL off. And then I am going to put a second piece of uh, shrimp wrap on here. 
So this is a situation actually where I like to, sh to stretch the shrink wrap out. Because the other thing that happens when you stretch the shrink wrap out is then when it grabs back down again, it, it pulls harder, right? Because it's, it's, you know, you're taking a smaller bit of shrink wrap and making it fit where it doesn't want to. So just naturally, when it uh, clamps down, it clamps down harder. So, yes, so the, no, so this guy, I need another little piece for that, um, and this could be it, that's a little big, let's go with one of these little guys, yeah, that should work, a little short, but we'll be alright, do I have anything a little bit longer, is that too small? Let's see. Yeah, that guy's too small. And it's one of the adhesive ones. Um, this this guy will be fine. Oh no, this is one of the adhesive ones though. I don't I don't necessarily want that. Where'd that little fella go? We'll use this little guy. We'll just stretch him out. Okay. So let's see if I can stretch this guy out without him exploding. Shrimp wrap is one of my favorite things. Okay, I'll stop singing now for the good of all mankind. Okay, cool, no, this is actually perfect. So yeah, before you install this, put an extra piece of shrimp wrap that's sized for this thing on there, then plug the UFL in. And then shrimp wrap that. And then put a second piece of shrimp wrap on, which we're gonna do right now just to like really pull on that. But actually what I'm gonna do is get a smaller piece and then stretch it out because that's gonna pull harder. Know what I'm saying? Uh, no, that's not what I want. I need one size smaller than this. Is that what this is? Yeah, perfect, okay, cool. So, Oh wait, do I have a piece sitting right here, ready to go? I do, I do, look at me go. Okay, so we're gonna take this guy and just stretch it out. Hopefully it doesn't rip. And so yeah, when this, when this shrinks up, it's going to uh, pull really hard. And now normally I would, I would like to do this without this whole bundle sat down here, but I'm um, being lazy. So I'm gonna use the, the torch to just kind of gently, as gently as I can at least, heat this guy up. And yeah, just give it a little bit more, a little bit more violence. Oh shit, get this guy out of here, get this guy out of here. Don't let him shrink up there. Ah, god damn it. Yep, there it is. Fail. Put this guy on top. Okay. So we got a little piece here. Let's see if I can get this to work. Well, it seems to have fused itself together. Now we're good. We're good. All right, so we'll slide this fella on here and then see how that does. Problem is this is like digging into the, the VHB now. So it's hard to get it. It's hard to get it under there. Come on! 
God damn it, get in there. Get in there, you little devil. Oh, come on. Come on now. Be cool, piece of shrink wrap. Be, be, be cooler than this. Be not such a dick right now. I'll just pry the VTX up off of the uh, VHB. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, now I can sneak it on in there. Yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, it only snuck in there on one side. The other side's still being a jackass. This is why you do it before you VHB it down. How stubborn can I possibly be about this? There we go. Just stubborn enough is the answer. Alright, now hopefully this shit doesn't implode. As it has a tendency to. And there it goes. It just ripped. God damn it. Well... Uh, I don't think it ripped all the way through, and it's kind of good to go. It's going to give a little bit of extra strength, and that's uh, that's all I'm really looking for. Uh, video is back after did the oh the video froze again? What the fuck? Weird man. Weird. Uh, Boost and JDM. Uh, the heat gun thing has been discussed before. It's not. It's not something I'm really interested in. Um, it's a big tool. It's not quite precise enough. Um, there's a million reasons. I'm not gonna beat that dead horse. <laughs> Uh, the scissors are an interesting idea, though. I'm a big fan of scissoring. Know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, the heat gun thing is never gonna happen. I'll take that shit to my grave. All right, way to go, Donnie. We got that guy in there. Let's crank this other one down just to make sure. Now he's all set. We are gonna take this little friend. We are gonna take this little antenna. We're gonna slot this in here. With the shrink wrap up, to, with the, sorry, shrimp wrap up top. Actually, let's put this on the standoffs first, so. On the standoffs it goes, we create our little angle here, slot this guy in, take the shrimp wrap down, and it's gonna, it's gonna close this little fella. But then we wanna push down, we wanna give a little bit of slack here. God forbid this thing gets pulled, uh, it's just gonna pull right up against that. And then you can see the shrimp wrap is also butting up against the rear standoff here. So if this thing really gets pulled, the shrink wrap is going to push into the standoff and it's going to it's going to not let the UFL get yanked out of there. I've never had a UFL get ripped off with this setup. It's it's crazy. It works staggeringly well. So there we go, we got that guy on there. And then the last little piece of the puzzle is a tiny little zip tie just to further cramp this, this TPU, uh, clamp this TPU down. So we put this little guy on here and just yank it as tight as it'll go. And put the, uh, put the head of the, uh, the zip tie going downwards because the head of the zip tie doesn't really uh, clamp as hard as the as hard as the round part here, so you put it down like that and crank it, and there we go. That is 
the lightest and strongest and best way to mount an antenna that I have found in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of crashes and different attempts and uh, yeah there you go this rig I think is done and it's on fresh motors now we still got to put some uh, some retention on these guys and we need to put foam feets on but uh, yeah that won't take very long foam feet here uh, wrap straps in here extra piece of wrap strap let's do that first uh, looks like I have one here I wonder if this is long enough let's see Run this around Oh, it's long enough. How many circles is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a seven hole piece. Oh, is it too loose? Nah, it's just about right. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, cool. So a seven, a little seven holer. That's what we want. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's chop the last one off. Uh, wait, how the hell do I chop these off? I always forget how I do it. I have a specific way that I do it. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Chop it off here so that it's the strongest. Cool. Uh, all I'm doing there is just trying to remove the least amount of possible material. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go here. Uh, I I put the um, I put these in a specific directionality because of the way the props come around. Um, so I'll show you in a second. So since I'm uh, props out, and I actually did it wrong on the other side. Come on, get in there. So since it's props out, the prop strikes are going to happen here. So you put the uh, the big boogery part outwards, away from it, like that. I did it wrong on this side. I forgot. All right, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's where I cut it. I just cut it down like that, and then down like that, so that the end has the most material, so that it's as strong as possible. Tiny, tiny, tiny little thing, but, you know, that's what she said. Uh, okay. Let's go this direction. This time. Come on, really? Stay in there, you little jackass. Could probably do a... I could probably do these one shorter... Uh, but I'm not. So, you know, screw you. There we go. That's the stuff. Come on with it. Get in there. There we go. It's kind of stubborn, which is a good thing because that means it won't come off when you don't want it to. Last one, and we're going to cut it from the fresh piece. Let's chop this guy down. And 
down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to chop this guy up and up. All right, we're good there. And nope, do it this way. Under and over, go through the little hole. Grab it, pull it through. This wrap strap is interesting. It like turns white when you uh, when you start to stretch it. It's kind of cool. You can like see where it's stretching the most. And we're gonna slide it down here. Cool. So there we go. Bush and uh, and we got that drone hoof. Scratch wrap. YouTube says, ah, oh, fresh motors. What a beautiful luxury. Let's see what color those front uh, LED race wires are. Um, yeah, fuck it. Hey, they're purple. Terrific. So foam fetuses, uh, I'm going to do this a little bit kind of off camera, but not really, uh, because I don't want the, um, I don't want the antenna to, to flatten out as much. Hack for repairs. Don't even bother flying. A hundred percent. That's what I did this winter time. <laughs> I just didn't really fly. Okay. So this is the super magical Impulse RC foam. I'm not even really saying that tongue in cheek. Like it is actually magical. The uh the adhesive that they use is just phenomenal, and it, uh, and then the the way that they fuse the foam to the adhesive is is amazing too. Um, I've tried a lot of different foam feats, and none of them are anywhere near this Impulse RC foam. Really kind of cool. Learn this from Steel actually. Thought he was totally full of shit when he said that this foam was was magic. But I trusted him, and I ordered some, and lo and behold, it is magic. So much so that I actually put it out on the uh, on the actual arms. Instead of putting it in here, if you put the if you get the cheapo foam feet, you can put them in here and you can wrap these wrap straps around it. Um, to really hold it on, but with these little guys, I have really good luck sticking them out all the way on the ends of the arms here, which is kind of nice. And yeah, it's one of the other nice things about only running three motor screws, is it gives you a perfect little spot to put your, uh, your little foam foot. Tricks, man, all them tricks. A million little things make uh, make a difference. I mean, for me, it's just trying to have something that's more durable. That's all I really care about anymore. I'll do anything for durability as long as it doesn't add too much weight. And now I'm going to do the... Uh, the two back feet off camera, but you know, I'm doing it the same way I just did those. Come on, get off of there. Or I'm fucking it up twice in a row. 
There we go, that's better. All right, there's one. Bush and DDM says, Fiskers, bunch of numbers are my go-to hobby scissors. And then BeepTube says, I use Lumineer foam hooves wrapped with electric tape. Yeah, the Lumineer ones are nice, but my God, are they expensive. I like that they make the skinny ones. Uh, I really like that they make the skinny ones. But they're like... Isn't it like... Isn't it like $3 for like a set of four? It's something ridiculous. It's just an outrageous... I mean, the, although this Impulse RC foam is like $4 for a strip, but each strip I can do a whole bunch of arms with, so it seems a little bit less ridiculous. The other thing um, with doing the... Uh, the electrical tape, well, the, the glide arms are, if, if I could get the skinny ones, that would be nice, because I could put the skinny ones here, and then electric tape around here, which would not cover up the, uh, the race wire, uh, but with the thick ones, I put the thick ones in here, where the arm is a little bit thicker, but then when you do electric tape, it covers up half the goddamn, uh, uh, LED race wire, so, yeah, I don't know, maybe next time I do a get FPV order, I'll get uh, another set of the, um, the skinny ones, and then put them out here. What annoys me is then when you break an arm, the you lose the the foam foot. Um, and when they're a dollar per, it's like shit, man. I can't afford this hobby. A dollar per crash? What are we? Made of gold? That doesn't make any sense. Dexter Greenman says, I have a new AIO flight controller. Uh, in JESC, it, ju it shows just one ESC. In BLM, it shows two ESCs. What could be the reason? Um, Dexter, is it, when you say AIO flight controller, do you mean that it's an AIO with the flight controller and the ESC all in one board? Um, if so, that's probably the problem. Uh, the, the AIOs, so mo most people, myself included, just call those AIOs, all in one, as in all being like flight controller and, and ESC. Um, AIOs are awful. Uh, they're extremely unreliable. Uh, they blow up for no reason. They blow up all the time. Um, so yeah. It sounds like you've got one of the million blown up AIOs. Um, it sucks, dude. It's it's really. Uh, I really wish that AIOs would go away forever because they really make this hobby a lot more frustrating than it needs to be. Um, but what can I do? So yeah, I, I don't really have a good answer for you. Um, for the most part with, I mean, it, you've already done everything you can. You, you fired it up in JESC, you fired it up in regular BL Heli. Um, like, like that's kind of it. Like with, when it comes to ESCs, like you've done everything that you possibly can. Like, in unless you so the 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 proper solution is to never ever buy an AIO again always buy um 20 by 20 stacks uh, a 20 by 20 stack is going to be infinitely more reliable it's going to give you better flight performance um and you're not going to have to deal with what you're dealing with there um so yeah that's the uh that's going to be your best solution the uh and they're also uh, a, a 20 by 20 stack is about one gram heavier um so there's really like there's just no benefit to the aios other than a little bit of a reduction in uh deck height which for me doesn't matter for people trying to put um, DJI into micros, it matters, but I don't know. I, I would rather get a frame where you can run slightly higher standoffs and not have 
an $80 board that blows up every five batteries. <laughs> but hey, that's just me. It sucks, dude. I, I, I know it sucks. Um, it's, uh, it's just a real shitty situation that we're in with, with micros in terms of electronics at the moment. Um, I really wish that the manufacturers would bail on the AIO thing and, and put more effort into 20x20s, 20 by 20s, uh, 20 by 20 stacks, because if they had, if, if they'd been focusing more on 20 by 20 stacks, we would have even better, even thinner, even smaller, uh, 20 by 20 stacks available that wouldn't blow up all the time, that would give us better flight performance. Um, but yeah, they're not. Less electrical noise, right? Because your ESCs and your battery leads aren't going directly to the same board. It's so frustrating. Like, the, like these companies are working so hard on the AIOs to try to get them to work right. And it's just like, no, stop. Like, stop wasting your time on them, please. Give up. It's bad. It's a bad idea. It's it, it's it, it's kind of like Porsche uh, Porsche with the 911, like putting the engine behind the rear axle is dumb. But I mean, if you pour enough time and money into it, you can kind of make it work. But then they build the Cayman, which is proper mid-engined, and then they have to like neuter the performance of the Cayman because if they don't it'll outperform the 911s all over the place. And it's like, like yeah, the 911 is, is unbelievably impressive for what it is, but if I'm going to spend $100,000 plus on a car, I mean, you can probably get 911s for a little bit less than that, but you know what I'm saying. If I'm going to spend that much money on a car, I don't want it to be, like, surprisingly good for having the, the engine in the wrong location. I want the fucking engine in the right location and for it to be good. Like... That's just the opinion of one angry fella. Uh, according to Gabob, even the $80 Beast H7 or F7 or whatever the hell it is, the AIO that everybody has said is, is going to change it and make, you know, AIOs reliable and all this shit, uh, Bob told me that those are all starting to blow up now, too. So... You know, it's almost, it's sometimes, every once in a while, it's almost like I know what I'm talking about. Almost. Not quite, but almost. <laughs> hey, it looks like a quad again. Look at that. Cool. Fresh antenna, fresh motors. Do we have uh, motor nuts? No, we don't. <laughs> Where are the fucking motor nuts? Um, oh, they're probably still on the uh, on the other motors. Well, that's good because my little area of motor nuts, I think, is kind of filled up. Yeah, it is. Cool. Let's. Uh, should we go purple? Let's go purple. Is this no? This is not a purple rig. We're gonna go black. We're gonna go black, and then you know goddamn well we're never gonna go back. Uh, that one's a different color nylon. I'm not gonna have that. Cool. Oh, no. They're right here. The motor nuts are right here. Well, I tried. I tried to be fancy. We're not going to be fancy. We're going to use the T-Motor ones because these are T-Murder murders. Me murmur murmurs. Go-Kart Mozart says 20 by 20 can be too big for some builds. Um, yeah, but I, I would always rather run a... Uh, 
two or three or five millimeter taller. Typically that's all you need is another two to five millimeters to fit a 20 by 20 stack. Um, and the performance increase that you're gonna get from less electrical noise and the price decrease you're gonna get from the board not blowing up constantly and being able to just replace either the flight controller or the ESC depending on which one blows up. You know, all of these things negate the uh, that one minuscule advantage of a uh, of the AIOs. I'm not even gonna say in my opinion because it's just fucking fact. Let's be real. Just a bad design. Just, I mean. It, like, the AIO thing has been done over and over and over again over the years, and it's always been awful. So, like, let's stop. <laughs> like, let's just give up. It's been proven to be a terrible idea time and time again. Let's stop bashing our heads into it. Cool! This rig is gonna fly good. It's got all fresh arms and fresh motors and oh yeah. Boy, I put some Loctite on some stuff. Red rig. New motor. I think it only needs a motor bell too. Is it this one? Yes, it is. See it stop? Shouldn't stop like that. It should do this. Uh, I bet the shit out of this motor belt, too. I don't even know the crash that did it. Uh, the, uh, this was a weird one. I, I don't know. Sometimes crashes can not look that bad, but like they'll hit just kind of perfectly wrong, um, and, and they can be a lot worse than they, uh, they seem. Typically, like, typically I'll know. Um, thanks for hanging, T-Bird. Typically I'll, I'll have a really good idea of whether or not the, the rig is going to be on fire or uh, somewhat okay. Like, the second that I hit, uh, you can kind of tell. I mean, it's just, once you've crashed 10 million times, you just kind of have a good feel for it. Um, and yeah, th this was not one of them. This was not a, a crash that I thought was gonna take a toll on anything, but um, it certainly did. So we got that guy, what is this? Oh, this is a 1600 KV stator. I'm actually gonna solder this stator on, I think. No, I'm not because it's all janky. I'm just gonna throw the uh, motor bell on. This is a rig that has 1600, 1600, 1600, 2400 uh, KV. And uh, yeah, you guys saw the footage from the stadium. Looked fine, didn't it? Certainly flew fine. So in case anybody was wondering, uh, there you go. I mean, I, I've been saying that forever, but it doesn't matter. But, uh, yeah, there's your... I kind of forgot that I did that. <laughs> Some of you guys were probably with me on that live stream because I, I ran out of these staters and I needed to switch the stator over. Um, so, yeah, there we go. I'm not even going to bother. I could just go in the box. I, I, I have another... Uh, three more 1600 kV staters, I could just go grab them. But I'm not gonna, because it doesn't make a difference. The, the pit loop figures it out, and yeah, scales it down, and you're good to go. In the same way that motor limiting works, it's literally the exact same process. It just doesn't send it, it just sends it the, the correct amount of power. It just sends it, uh, well, no, it's, it's not as it's that, it's, it's that it uh, 4,000 times a second is a lot, and it's enough to uh, control 
for a little bit less power, or uh, a, a different uh, KV stator and or motor. Yeah, on the, on the first pulse, I'll bet you it sends a little bit too much, would be my guess. But then it's okay because a fourth, one four thousandth, or in this case, one eight thousandth of a second later, um, it correct. Well, no, I guess it doesn't correct it until. I don't know how that. I don't know how that workflow goes. To be honest, Alex Vornick says, "Did you have to make any adjustments to settings to get different KV motors with one another, or the PID loop does everything? The PID loop does everything, Alec. Um, <clears throat> it, uh, yeah, it just handles it." It just, the, the, the PID loop just runs so fast, uh, it runs and monitors and, and, and yeah, it runs so fast, four or 8,000 times a second, um, that it just figures it out. Like magic. And it just doesn't send as much Oompa Loompa to that motor. You know what, we can actually test this. Let's do a little test in the motors tab. And we'll pro I'll prove to you guys, that, and, and to myself actually, that this is a 2400 kV stator. So we gotta pull the props off for this. Ooh, I've never actually done this before. This is cool. Uh, so T-Motor does not mark, a lot of these motor manufacturers don't put any markings on the stator that designate what KV it is, uh, they'll just put it on the bell. So if you're like me and you switch bells instead of switching entire motors because you know, you're not independently wealthy, um, eventually it's easy to, to get the bells and the stators kind of mixed up and you end up with uh, unmarked stators where you don't know what KV they are. But I believe, and we're about to see, in the motors tab, I believe that you can uh, ramp the motor up and just listen, or I guess you could even look at the RPM readout. And it's not gonna tell you the KV, but you're gonna see here that one motor spins up to a higher RPM than the other. Um, and so I know that these are either 1600 or 2400. Um, so yeah, let's see. And here. I'm just gonna do it by ear because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be very easy to hear the difference. Uh, mismatched props will work out exactly the same way. It's totally fine. The only problem with mismatched props is is it's gonna fuck with the response time because mismatched props are a different weight. Um, but the PID loop is still gonna work it out. The, the more mismatched stuff you have, basically what's gonna happen is the wor when you mismatch stuff, the worst single thing becomes the whole performance of the entire system. So the heaviest prop, actually, I don't know. I don't know how that would work with the props. So that's the new motor. Let me, or it's the new bell. Um, so that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that that bell wasn't um, damaged. So listen, this is the 2400 and then the next one, well, I'll do all four. Here, I'll do all four, ready? Oh my God, what a difference. Right? I, I have to assume you guys could hear that. Uh, I'll do it one more time just in case you couldn't. Hear how much higher that goes? You don't, uh, 2400 KV on 6S is, is too much. I, I'm not gonna hold it there because it's it's probably getting a little warm already. Nah, it's not. 
but it's it's just too much KV, so I, I don't want to leave it there. But you could definitely hear the difference. Um, so yeah, there you go. If you had uh, if you had like four different KV staters, it might be a little bit harder. But I don't know. That was pretty goddamn drastic. <laughs> So yeah, there you go. There's how to tell the difference between uh, mismatched skaters. And there's your boy Ciotti FPV with the full glide fleet back in fighting shape. <coughs> Ready to be destroyed yet again. Um, these props are kind of banged up. We'll leave the, the props off. I love leaving the propellers off. The, the rigs are so much less angry and aggressive and stabby there we have it red rig is back purple rig has turned into violet rig and then here's what i was flying today in downtown alpharetta hero eight mount uh and this is the this is the clean rig uh Ooh, you know what i do need to do i switched the uh, i switched the motors on the violet rig, on the purple rig, which is now kind of the violet rig, uh, I need to uh, motor scale these down a little bit because right now it's at a hundred percent, which is where I like it on the sixteen hundred kV uh, T motor F forty Pro twos, but these are eighteen fifty, nineteen fifty. I forgot about that. These are nineteen fifty kV. Uh, T motor F40 Pro 4s, and I really prefer these at 85% output. So we're going to scale factor 85%, save it, and we might as well wipe out the uh, black box while we're at it. So there we go. Uh, William Loach says, What hardware slash standoffs are you using there? I use um, hexagonal. 15 millimeter standoffs on all my glides. Uh, Go Kart Mozart says there's an old schizo video where we built a quad, four different motors, uh, four different ESCs, different props, old Beta Flight 2, and it was uh, surprised how well it still flew. Yeah, I mean, at, at 4,000 uh, or 8,000 monitoring moments per second, uh, you can put anything on them. But yeah, the thing to remember is that the. So. Four separate, four different ESCs. The worst of those ESCs is going to be the full performance of all the ESCs. Four mismatched motors. The worst motor is going to be the performance of all the motors. Four mismatched props. The worst propeller is going to be the performance of the whole system. So, um, uh, but yeah, the pin loop will just kind of figure it out. It's uh, it's pretty amazing how much uh, how much work the pit loop will do and that was that was forever ago right because Jonathan hasn't flown in years um, yeah I mean like kiss hasn't changed at all in pretty much the entire time that uh, schizo has not been flying and there's people that still on purpose run kiss so it's uh, it's pretty shocking how good the PID loop has performed for as long as it has. Uh, Alec Dvornik says, isn't the PID loop going to limit down? Yep, uh, now you just lowered the lowest KV. Uh, no, so that wasn't the red rig, that was the uh, the violet rig, which has the brand new matched 1950 KV motors. Um, two hours and 29 minutes, look at that. Two and a half hour live stream, thanks for hanging. Uh, what was this, Workbench Wednesday? Workbench Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow or Friday, we're going to do uh, the, and I'm going to move it on to the workbench. There it is. That's what we're going to be finishing up. Uh, and we're going to get to, we're putting the Toka 1606s or 1505s on, so that should be pretty cool. I'm really excited to see what this thing does uh, with these motors. So yeah, we gotta solder on these. Um, we gotta solder on these longer race wires. We're gonna put those Toka motors on, and 
No, we're not. No, I'm putting the Toka motors on the other rig. That's right. I'm putting the... I don't know. We'll figure it out tomorrow or Friday. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, everybody. CIDFPV.com if you want to support me so I can keep doing all this wacky shit. Um, to everybody that, uh, that donated on Monday and continues to donate, thank you guys so much. Uh, stream should be a little bit more reliable with a half-decent computer. Uh, purple iMac M1 coming soon because of you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Here comes some more bridge flying. Um, this is just going to be a random battery at the bridge. Man, I flew that bridge a lot. 2.07 gigs. Cool. This should have some actual flying in it, not just crashing. This is in Charleston. And let me give you guys some music. Come on. Go. Go, computer. Go. Instrumental, dark and dreamy. Now we're talking. Look at your boy. Pretending like he's paying attention to uh, whether the props are all banged up or not. Enjoy, boys. I'll see you tomorrow.